Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm Monica Rea, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how I made this dress. I used the McCall's pattern M7974, and I did view A. It was a super fun dress to make, and this time around, I decided to use a blue and white seersucker. It's a perfect fabric for the summer, and it goes very well with the style of the dress. So if you're interested in seeing how I made this dress, stay tuned. So here's a closer look of what seersucker looks like. It's also known as railroad stripe and it's a thin puckered all cotton fabric that is most commonly striped or checkered and most of the time people wear this during the spring or summer. It gets that pattern or that puckered pattern by the way or the technique that's used when it's being woven. All right, so we're starting here with the two front bodice pieces and I'm just adding real quickly the gathering stitches at the top and bottom. For the back yoke, I decided to cut it in half so I could play with the stripes of the seersucker to create that little chevron. Here I'm just gathering the front bodice section so that it matches the back yoke at the shoulder seam. And then pinning in place. Here's the shoulder seams completed with the gathers and then I went ahead and added the back piece to the bottom of the yoke and that also has a little gather and here's what it looks like in the front. Now we're going to move on to the facing and here I'm just adding the two strips that have inner facing. And now we're just gonna sew around the neckline. As you can see, I finished off the edges or the outer edges of the inner facing. This will give it a nice and neat look once it's completed. So as I'm sewing this around the neckline, what you would do is turn it inside out and then under stitch it. And that'll allow it to lay nice and flat. Now we're moving on to the waistband. So here I have went ahead and gathered the bottom part of the bodice and I'm just attaching that waist piece. So you'll see that's what it'll look like. So I'm gonna sew down the center front of the waistband. Um, one side it's like a two-sided waistband, so one side has interfacing and the other side doesn't. So the side that faces outwardly will not have the interfacing. So in order to attach these and give it a uh, finished look on the outside, I'm going to sew down the center front and then across the bottom. As you can see here, I just flipped those pieces down and pressed them. And this is what the bodice looks like so far. So it all looks very nice and seamless on the inside and out. So now we're moving on to the sleeves and I'm taking this little piece of bias binding and I'm going to sew it around this little cutout. So what you do is sew on on the inside of it, sew it around that curve, which it was a little tricky because it's such a tight curve. but you just have to be gentle and patient. And so at that point, once you finish, you just flip it inward and over on itself so that it's nice and smooth and you don't see that first seam at all. You'll only see this seam finishing. I would have to say though, overall, this was my first time working with Searsucker and I loved it. It didn't fray very much at all, just, you know, with handling it, but overall it was a really great fabric to work with. And so here I'm just sewing the uh, sleeve seams. This part is the actual armband and ties that go at the bottom of the sleeve. So what I did was fold it in half and then sew around the edges and then flip it inside out. And now I'm tucking in that 
gathered part of the sleeve inside of the open piece of the, the strip. And here's what it looks like all sewn together, one tied and one loose. Here's what she's looking like so far with the sleeves on. So now moving on to the skirt. So this skirt had a total of seven panels, four panels in the front and three in the back. I'm gonna go ahead and put together the front and back sections. Here's the front and back section. So the only thing that's open would be at the sides and that's where I'm gonna be putting the pockets. And surprisingly, this pattern, I guess since it's not a vintage one, because those are the only types of patterns I've done thus far, dress-wise, those did not come with pockets already included in the pattern. So this is the first dress that I've ever done where the pattern actually included pockets. So I'm going to construct the pockets as the pattern says. where I'll stop sewing is in between those. So this one actually has the pocket sewn into the waistband. The, I think the main difference with this as far as sewing your pockets into the waistband, it actually helps with the stress that would be put on the seams if you just had them kind of floating. Um, if you're putting like heavier objects in your pockets, over time it would wear down the seams. So this is just kind of like an extra secure pocket. <laughs> Here I'm just attaching or pinning down the skirt to the bodice. Now that I've got that sewn on, I've decided to go ahead and use the bias binding along the waist as like a waist tape. And here's what it looks like after having the bias binding. I love it. Alrighty, and now onto the buttons. This is just a close up of the machine doing its thing. I lined out with chalk where I wanted my buttonholes to be. And here's just a close up of the buttons. There were a total of 13 button holes and buttons. Now all that's left to do is uh, hem it up at the bottom. I've already pinned it and pressed it. Now it's sewn. So, ready for the reveal. I must say, I really love this dress. I really like the style of it and I will definitely be making another one of these as well. Alright, thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the video and of course don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed it and also consider subscribing if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!